Okay, let's talk about uh, a basic three-axis uh, two-sided machining. Uh, I'm calling this box and flip. The box refers to a box stock. It's just a standard a box stock that you provide the X, Y, and Z dimensions of the stock. So I'm going to start over here on the left, uh, on the top. This is the part that we're illustrating. We've got the top view, the front view, and the bottom view. You'll see that there's features on both the top side and the bottom side, and there's obviously features uh, around the perimeter. Obviously, you can't machine this from one side because you have uh, undercuts uh, over here that you can't get at. So in, in this technique, uh, instead of using uh, tabs or bridges, we're modeling the tabs uh, into the part. And that's what you see in the middle row here in green. So basically we just extruded a solid cylinder through the X and through the Y. Uh, the length of these cylinders, uh, it's not that important, only that it extends past the part uh, significantly enough so that you can, uh, you know, get a tool in there and, and cut this out. So we have, uh, we got two rods, X and Y. We've got a curve, which is a circle. And that circle lies on the X, Y plane. So that circle is gonna contain the tool pass within that area. So the, the tabs or the rods that we model have to extend past that circle. If you don't, then it's, it's just not gonna be held together. So if you move over to the next uh, third column, um, you see we simulated the top side and you'll notice that the areas where the rods were, um, the machining uh, skipped that area. Obviously any, any geometry that's visible uh, when you generate an operation in three axis uh, automatically will be checked against for gouge-free um, uh, toolpath means that it will not cut into that area, and it, ju it just has to be displayed whenever you generate the toolpath. That's all uh, it has to do. As long as it turned on, you can see it on the screen. Uh, when you generate it, it won't it won't cut through those. So you can see on the top side, uh, we machined everything down uh, past uh, the center of the part, pa basically past the. Uh, quadrant of this uh, arc on the outside so that you machine past that point um, and you can see when you flip it over and then you uh, do the other side uh, as well now when again uh, just a square box the part in the stock is centered x y and z so that when you do the one side and then you flip it over and you set the setup to the same uh, position, it will line up automatically for you. You won't have to, the complexity of the part does not matter. The only thing you know you need to make sure is that the part and the stock are aligned uh, in the center. And you're gonna, I know you're gonna ask me, well, what if it's not? And we'll talk about that, uh, how to do that in just a moment. So that's the basic uh, box and flip in three axes. And I'm gonna show you a, a production um, application for that. So you see we have the tabs modeled, they're in green, okay? We got three uh, cylinder rods here on one end. On the other end, uh, we don't have a lot of room for a cylinder rod, so we modeled just a square block that can, comes in underneath the part on the end. and like I said, it doesn't have to be a cylinder. It can be any type of sur surface that's gonna break up uh, the tool path on each end so that it um, you know, remains connected uh, to uh, the stock material. So on the very top left, we see the part. Uh, this is a scanned uh, part that uh, uh, for a woodworking um, um, technique. So the we have three copies of the part here on the left. And you'll notice that not only do we have the bridges modeled, but we also have uh, curves model, uh, drawn on the XY plane. The first rectangular curve 
is to contain the roughing operation, the profile curves in the, in the center of the part are for the finishing operations. And then the, um, the purple uh, surfaces you see here are positioned so that the, the tool, when you do the three axis operation, it has a surface to land on. In other words, if there's no surface under the tool in three axis, the tool will automatically retract to the clearance plane. So instead of, you know, tool retracting over and over and over and over, just put a surface under there for the tool to land on. And that surface, uh, it just needs to be uh, at the Z location, you know, to make sure it encompasses the entire part from one side and the tool will land on that. As you can see in the simulation over here on the right, uh, the plane, uh, rectangular plane, is where the tool stopped on and it machined all of the part with the tabs, as you can see on each of the ends. Um, and then this is then flipped over. The parts, there may be three parts, but the, all three parts are centered uh, in the stock so that when you flip the stock over, uh, everything's aligned automatically. So that's uh, a production example of the box uh, and flip method. Again, if you guys think any questions, just put them in the questions uh, panel and uh, we'll answer them for you. Here's another, uh, the bottom side to this particular part. Uh, here you see the, the rectangular tabs. Uh, they extend in underneath the part and just enough to hold them to the stock itself. And you can see the bottom side uh, simulated here with the tabs. And you also see that the part is completely separated everywhere except for the tabbed areas. So you basically do side two, take it off, and you'll have to manually cut these tabs off and, you know, clean it up on the ends. Okay. So here is the... Um, the bridge, not the bridge and flip, uh, I guess you would call it the, uh, what did we call it? Mm -hmm. It's the one with the, with the uh, extrusions. That we're going to add extrusions on each end. And um, in this example, I showed you the picture uh, of the uh, cut material simulation. Basically, it's, so you're doing the same. For, if you have the extended configuration, you can only machine one side then you'd have to physically flip it over uh, and machine uh, the other side. So you can see here in uh, an actual real world, real world example where uh, it makes it a lot easier uh, for the pro in the pro configuration to actually machine uh, both sides. And, you know, we, we, we could go ahead and simulate it, but I got a more complex part I want to bring up and make sure we review that as well. So in this example, you're modeling your tabs in green. Your, let's go in the top view. We've got um, curves defined. That's a rectangular curve to contain the, the roughing. Uh, we got offset curves here that are gonna be used uh, to contain the finishing operation. And then obviously we have our um, rectangular flat surfaces that we're going to use to uh, uh, cap, catch uh, the tool during the three axis operations. <laughs> 